as well as Howard University, um, we are confident that she's going to hold uh, his, uh, his feet to the fire. So without any further ado, let us bring on the, uh, the glamorous, the gorgeous, the dynamic uh, Omarosa Manicole. Turn it on my Forgive me for my tardiness. The president just hosted 69 HBCU presidents, and he brought them all into the Oval Office and did a meet and greet with them, which was historical. It never happened in the history of this country. And so it was moving to see so many presidents there, but being able to engage the vice president was there, the secretary of education was there, as well as members from all across this administration letting the presidents know, and now letting you all know, that this administration is committed to the legacy, the contributions, the history of the great institutions. I am a product first of prayer. Amen. So that, Amen. <laughs> and I have attended three HBCUs, um, Central State undergrad, my master's in Gulf Coast Studies. I chose Gulf Coast Studies because I literally left to go do The Apprentice two weeks before my descent for my dissertation at Howard University. Needless to say, um, my career path would have been different had I done that, but I have no regrets. And then my demon from Payne Theological um, in Wilberforce, Ohio. And so I am truly a product of historically black colleges and have lived the fullest historically black college experience, including a four-year scholarship as a part of the Lady Marauders volleyball team, a part of black college radio history on 88.9 WCSU, as well as making sure that I was Miss Central State University of Black College Queen. <laughs> Continuing that work at Howard University, where up until the election, I served on the board of the Howard University School of Business, our MBA program and executive MBA programs that I teach in. And I've taught on and off at Howard University since my first year there in 1998. And so truly, my commitment to HBCUs is not just about talking the talk, but walking the walk. Tomorrow, we have a huge announcement. Tomorrow, this administration is going to be presenting an executive order to the president who will be signing it tomorrow in the Oval Office. And in that executive order, you will see what type of commitment. We judge people not just by what they say. But as we know in the world of historically black colleges and universities, it's where you put your money at that matters the most. So many people have made commitments to HBCUs. And you talked about parent question. What about Pell Grant? Mm. How much unclaimed Pell Grant money went for the last eight years? That, that's where you have to look at. And having sat down, and I have a great relationship with Arne Duncan in the previous administration, but I was really saddened to see um, the 30,000 students who had to drop out because of some of the decisions we made. So how do we make you right? How do we make you whole? Uh, first of all, you have to have a president who acknowledges the significant contributions this president has made. And, and you'll see more. I wish I could talk in depth about the changes in the executive order, but um, you will know that my role has been significantly changed, and so I will be very, very hands-on with what happens. But more importantly, the level of funding, resources, and commitment that you will see in this executive order, I think that you will see how powerful it is. And so my HBCU story is simply this. As a young student who grew up with a learning disability and who was told I probably wouldn't ever go to college, mm. having a recruiter come and from many schools, but as a as an athletic sort of hit, I was very, very impressed by a professor, I'm sorry, by a president by the name of Dr. Hart Thomas. And he said to us during my tour, we love, we trust. And out of all the tours I'd gone to, no one had spoken to me that way. Nobody saw me um, as a person, just as an athletic um, dynamo in volleyball. But I would also go on to join the Army ROTC, and I'm honored to serve as a military chaplain for the California State Military Reserve. And the roots of that came from a Colorado Battalion at Central State University, where I was in the ROTC program as well. I went on to come to Central State 
after graduating from St. Martin's and Howard University, which I wanted to get my master's in doctor. My background is in telecom. My PhD is in Section 254 of the Telecommunication Act. I am a policy analyst, so I know this government. This is my second appointment by a U.S. president, so I'm not new to the game. I'm not new to the government, and I know where the money is. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that makes a man, not only do I know the needs and the passions of students like myself, because of a learning disability or anything I could ever do. But boy, did I exceed the expectations of any of the teachers who told me that I would never, ever graduate or be a part of that corporation. And so for all of the little Omarosas who grew up in the projects of Youngstown, Ohio, mm. for all of the students who were told that you would never do anything or graduate or go anywhere in life, I will fight for you every single day. I will fight for every single dollar. But more importantly, I will lose fight and respect that you all deserve. We love, we love each of us, and we respect you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
institute something incredible technology that will bring HBCU so much further. And at least on a level playing field is just the right. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we'll you'll see. <laughs> yes? We'll see. You read it, and then the work begins. All right, without any further ado, let's give it up for our overall. Yeah. Thank you again. Uh, hey. You, know, you want to uh, again close us out uh, as the uh, vice president of NASDAQ. Uh, again, let's give a, a round of applause to uh, the Mills Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, obviously, this was a very successful evening. And last but not least, you brought in the star of the show, right? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> But you know, it's very interesting. I didn't, I, I must admit, I did not go to Howard University. I went a little bit further south over to the uh, next state. But I have met so many um, Howard graduates that have been successful that take things to the next level. Some of the people that we work with in Prince George's County who are successful business people, people, people. And you know, a lot of the issue becomes going to a place that makes you feel like can do something that you can make it. I think means a lot for a lot of young people. Um, as one who also comes from, as we say, the bricks, but mine were in New York. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes you don't see the type of people who can give you that hand up. They can help you, but as long as you have the right role model telling you you can make it, then you can go as far as your imagination will allow you to do that. So I want to thank Sam Paras again coming back here and um, having this program. I want to thank all of you for, for coming. As I've said, this seems to grow every time we walk here. And now the key thing is, we have someone here who said they know where the money is. <coughs> you know, my former boss used to always say, he's always quote that Jesse James said, why do you rob banks? Well, that's where the money is. <laughs> <laughs> Go where the money is. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're doing forward looking at it. Do you have any on Um, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, right now, from Goldman's perspective, I'm impressed with that. Hey, how are you doing? Where's my water? Thank you. 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 Thank you.